John chronicles for us the events that took place in rapid succession. Pilate's soldiers scourged him with a leather whip braided with pieces of metal and glass in order to rip and tear the flesh it struck, 40 stripes, save one. The soldiers, jesting at the one who claimed he was a king, braided for him a crown of thorns and thrust its spikes into his brow. As if to mock his royalty, a purple robe was placed on him. And as they teased and jibed and slapped and struck him with their hands, the soldiers jeered at him, saying, Hail, <laughs> King of the Jews! Pilate sought to release Jesus, saying, I find no fault with this man. But the Jews cried out, Crucify him! So the soldiers took Jesus and, bearing his own cross, led him away to Golgotha to be crucified. come to the place which is called Calvary. There they crucified him. Can you see him there? He's not an Olympic runner crossing a finish line, hands held triumphantly high. There's no broad smile of victory on his face, no cheering crowd. This man is dying, not for his own sins, but for yours and mine. Beyond the physical pain and agony, he's enduring the wrath of God for all sin and all sinners. He's humiliated and shamed. He's been stripped of everything, but perhaps the crown of thorns. But this is no ordinary crucifixion. There's something different about this crucified one. His death is buying life. His pain is purchasing healing. His blood is paying redemption's price. His face is a grimace of anguish and pain. His hands impaled on blood-soaked timber. His chest heaves as he struggles to breathe. Soldiers mock him. The thief on one side railed at him, wanting him to perform one more miracle and save them. An angry mob taunts him. If you're a king, why can't you save yourself? Though the answer is simple, the question hangs unanswered. If he saves himself, he cannot save them. With his words, it is finished. Suddenly the sky grew dark. The sun hid its face in shame at what man had done to its creator. The earth trembled in fear as it felt his crimson blood drop to the ground beneath the cross. The wind ran away. The air was chilled and churning. Men needed lanterns at noon. Gravestones were rolled away, and rocks flew about as if gravity itself had lost its hold. No, this was no ordinary crucifixion that day. And it was not an ordinary man who hung there suspended between heaven and earth. Messiah had come. And now, he was gone.
he looked down from the cross, his eyes met mine. I felt as if he peered into my very soul. And instead of anger or bitterness, what I saw there looked like love and forgiveness. Then I heard him, his voice weak as he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. There is something different about this man. There is something that's different about